Welcome to the final episode in the build uh, construction system tutorial series. Um, thank you guys for staying this long into the series. I hope you have learned a lot from this series and let's work on our UI. So the first thing what I want to do is create a new actor. I'm just going to create a simple regular actor. It doesn't matter. And let's call this build menu preview actor. And what I want to do in here is add the static uh, instance static meshes. And I want to lay out the preview of like you would see this in the actual uh, game. So let me add this and uh, I'm going to explain what I mean by that once I've added um, my layout. So I've added my components right here. Um, so every single one of these is our instances and I've moved them around and rotated them in positions that I know should be pretty good uh, for my menu. So this is basically what the menu will look like at the bottom of the screen. We will have these things right here. So um, once you have placed all of your um, items in positions, what, I, what you want to do is add a scene scene capture component to dimensional like so and this will add a camera so let's move back and rotate this towards our um, items let's set this in a position and for now the position is not too important we will adjust this in a second because right now we don't really know exactly where is it looking so we can just go here and like look and hope that it's all right so I will just simply move it somewhere on the screen. Let's compile this. And now with this capture component being selected, scroll down till this scene capture. Click on the texture target none and click on the render target render render target. <laughs> and uh, now you can save this and I will call this RT build menu. Let's save this. Now if we would go to our content browser, we can see that here we have this image. And this looks basically what we just created, but it's transparent and it's in very bad quality. As you can see, it has huge pixels. Let's work on the pixels first. And here on the right side, we have the sizes. So let's change the sizes to um, 2048 and then 24. And this will give us a way larger resolution and way more, way more pixels. As you can see, it turned black. So what we want to go do is go back and recompile this. Now the things are have appeared back on our screen. So now what I will do is make this a little smaller. Same goes for this window right here. Let's adjust this properly so that we can see the whole thing. And let's move the camera around so that everything is fitting nicely in the screen. Like so. There we go. I think this will be good enough for me. So I'll compile and save this. Now we can close this target. And we can actually close this actor as well. Make sure you compile and save this. And then let's click on this. Uh, render target and let's create a material from this. Let's open up the material. Let's click on the base node and let's change the blend mode to be translucent. Let's disconnect the base color and reconnect the RGB to the emissive color. Then from the alpha of this texture sample we want to do a minus one or one minus one minus and connect this to our opacity. And this will uh, allow us to, uh, the emissive color will allow us to see the, um, our, our uh, instances. And the uh, minus one will turn the opacity the other way around. So basically we can see this part and we will not see the black part. So as you can see in the material, there are our instances. So we can save this. And now let's go to our UI. And what I want to do is actually click on this material like so. And I will explain why in a second. 
Um, so the next thing what I want to do is let me move this up a bit because this is going to be in the way. I will add a horizontal box to this. So there we go. Let's move this to the top. Horizontal box. I want to make this full screen. So I'll set the offsets to zero. Then inside of here, I want to add an image. Image. And let's fill the screen with the image. Let's go to the brush. And here, now if I have selected this in the content browser, and I would click on this uh, arrow, boom, it applies this material. Now what you want to do is click on this change the material domain. And there we go. We have our buildable items visible, just like in the actor, and uh, just like in the target render image. So if you would now move these around in the actor, so let's select the actor. Let's make these into two screens. Now if you would move these around, let's select the instance. And let's change the z-axis. You can see that we can move these around and place them wherever we want them to be, like so. So you can adjust this to however you like. Now the next thing what I will do is add another horizontal box. And I'm not really sure I'm on top of it or below it. Well, we shall figure it out in a second. And what I want to do is also select all of my buttons and move them inside of this horizontal box. Now for this horizontal box, we want to anchor this to the bottom and to be all across the screen. For the position, uh, for the offsets, these are going to be zeros. And the size, let's make this 300 and the position is minus 300 in that case. There we go. So now I can see that my doors are a little bit higher than maybe they should be. So I will go to the preview of actor. And in the view of port, I might move this. I might move this camera down a little more. Or rather up a little more. There we go. So now this seems to be looking a little nicer. So now I will recompile this, close it down, and I will select the buttons. And what I want to do now with the buttons is make sure that they are filling. Uh, yeah, basically so that they are set to fill. And I will select the tint and I will make the alpha zero so they are transparent. Then I will copy this and I will paste this to hovered and pressed. And I will do the same thing for all of these buttons. So you can select all of them and paste the values on top of them, like so. There we go. Unfortunately for the um, sizing, we cannot select all of them. So select one by one and make sure that they are filling uh, the entire space that's given to them, like so. Also, what I probably want to do is move my logs a little bit outwards. In this case, since they are not exactly in the button. So let's see, we need to set this to 920. Recompile this. Well, this is kind of a little bit better. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. So I'm going to delete, delete the vertical box that we no longer need. Reset this location to be minus 450. And so let's go across the buttons. Everything seems to be pretty good except for the order. So the door button needs to go over here. And the step button needs to go over here. Window button, brick wall button should be this one. Wall button, brick floor button and log button. So there we go. So adjust this to however you like. Also, I will do some more small style changes. I will add some text to my currently existing buttons. There we go. Copy, paste, paste. 
boom very simple really nice compile and save this let's close the whole thing press play press b voila and we have all the things on the screen so let's select the buildables which we cannot and that is because like i said i didn't know in which order we need that is because this horizontal box should be below the image so i'm gonna move the image higher like so compile and save this now boom we can select our buildables so there we go awesome you could face an error with the surrender target if you would close the project and open it back up you would see that um, this image is blank and it doesn't show the um, buildable options so what you can do to fix this is drag in your build menu preview of actor in the scene and uh, well we don't want to keep it here because well it's gonna bother us so what I will do is simply move this into the outer space and we can do this by setting for example X axis to 100 million if we do this, double click on the build preview actor and still not there. So what did I do? Is this 100 million? This is not 100 million. So let's add another zero and another zero. And now we are in the outer space and this will work perfectly fine every time we open and close the game. And as you notice, this thing appeared on itself without recompiling the actor because this is a perfect place to store uh, unnecessary things uh, that we use in the widget and not in the actual game world. So now it's gonna work perfectly. So the build is now complete, the menu is complete, everything is complete and let's add a small 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 extra detail to this. Let's create a functionality that will allow us to blow this house up. To accomplish that we need a new blueprint structure which I'm gonna call S destroy and in this one we need two variables the first one is the transform so that we know where to place the actor and the other one is the static mesh and of course this is the transform and this is the static mesh variable types so now in our build preview we can add this two variables so I'm gonna call this destroy DB this is our s destroy structure all right now I'm gonna add a new function and I'm gonna call this destroy me we need to get components by class because we need all of our instances instance static mesh component loop for each so that we would go through all of the actors then from this array element we want to get the instance count and also we need to get static mesh there we go from this instance count let's do minus one let's do a from the loop body let's do a flow control loop using this as the last index then from here we want to let's see we probably want to add to our destroy database so add like so let's break this structure connect the static mesh and let's drag from the array element again and let's get the instance transform using this array's index and in the world space let's check connect the transform and now we are saving every single instance in the database every single instance entry rather then let's see so we've done this then from the loop first loop once this is complete we should drag in our destroy database we need to loop through all of it and here we need to spawn an actor which we don't have right now so so I think everything is done with that part let's create a new actor and this is going to be a static mesh a static mesh actor type I'm gonna call this build piece now inside of here we want to add a variable let's call this mesh this is going to be the static mesh type we need to check that this is instance editable and exposed on spawn so we can set values from the outside 
for the static mesh component let's select basically any mesh and it, what is important is that we simulate physics on this one then in our construction script let's drag in our static mesh component let's set static mesh for the static mesh component and this is our variable that we will provide from the outside there we go now in the event graph this is not uh, important but what I will do is do a delay and once the delay will be finished I will destroy the actor and this is going to happen on begin play so basically we're going to spawn the actor give it some time and destroy it and for this delay I'm going to do a random float in range and this is basically going to be from up from 4 up until 10 seconds so every actor is going to decide a random time and destroy itself so now back in our build preview in this loop what we can do is spawn actor from class let's select the class is going to be our build piece and let's split the array element structure so the transform gets connected and the mesh gets connected once this loop is complete we can destroy actor and this basically is going to destroy our build preview leaving us with pieces that are going to get destroyed after a few seconds as well so now with this being done let's pop open our third person character and I want to do a keyboard one event so once I press one I will destroy the actor and what I want to do is copy the first part of the E key because that's going to do exactly the same thing we're going to do a line trace and once we have successfully casted to build actor we want to destroy me so now that my build is complete I will look at it and press keyboard key one and boom the building gets destroyed and now let's wait a few seconds and you can see that the actors are slowly disappearing clearing out our game world from the from the garbage so yeah that's going to be it thank you guys for sticking through this series hope you learned a lot if you like this series share them with your friends like all that good stuff and see you guys in the next video